This video is sponsored by iFixit. I've already made a teardown video for the Xbox Series X, but we're done talking about that. It's time to talk about the Xbox Series S. I'll also be taking a look at the Xbox Series S and Series X controller in another video, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. But now let's take apart the Xbox Series S, have a look at the inside and see how repairable the console is. I'm gonna be using my iFixit ProTech toolkit. This toolkit has basically anything you will need to take apart any of these new consoles. And right now iFixit is having great holiday sales so you can get that toolkit you've had your eye on. Go to iFixit.com slash TronixFix for your coupon code and get the best deals of the season. I have not taken apart the Xbox Series S console. I have also not seen a teardown on this, so this will be all new to me. I can tell right away though that there will be screws under here and under here. As on the Series X, these no longer have the warnings that say your warranty will be void if you remove them, which is great. That just discourages people from trying to repair it themselves. And I'll be using a Torx T9 to remove these screws. That's okay, that just looks like that just slides out. Okay, well that's easy enough. We got some pads on here. Those will be helpful when your girlfriend throws it on the ground. This looks pretty similar to the Xbox One S and X consoles. So I'll be taking out all the green screws first and then I should be able to get this outer case off. And now we should be able to get this top piece off. Over on this side is the power button. And over on this side is the eject button. And this little green board has the power button here. And then this board has the eject button. It's always nice when there's a little board like this that has the power button and LED light on it. Cause if needed, you can just replace this little board if the power button breaks. And with those boards off of the outside, we can now remove all these screws and then take the top off and start removing the interior components. Now with all those screws out, we should be able to get the two pieces apart and check out the inside. Okay, so the fan is attached to the top. So we need to remove this connector down here. So I'll use a pair of pliers and pull on the part that the wires go into and not the part on the motherboard. So here is the fan. It's pretty similar to previous Xbox One models of fans. This is the fan on the Xbox One S all digital. And this is the fan on the Xbox Series S. So pretty close to the same. The fan on the Series S is a little bit smaller. And I also see that there are more blades and the blades are a little bit thinner. So this is definitely kind of a crazy view. This is the Xbox One S all digital. And this is the entire Xbox Series S. In my opinion, this is what the Xbox One S all digital should have been because it looks to me like Microsoft took some shortcuts and basically just removed the disk drive out of this, but left everything pretty much exactly the same. While the Xbox Series S, you can tell has just been completely redesigned into a much smaller package. But I think this could have been the size of this. This is also cool. They show which way the airflow goes. So this is the intake side where the air comes in and it goes up and through the fan and down through the heat sink here and then out the vent holes right here. So when you need to clean your Xbox Series S, make sure that this side of it is completely clean. And then also if you need to clean it, you can clean the top side of the heat sink. In my experience, the Xbox One Original and Xbox One S didn't really have much of a problem with these blades getting clogged. But if yours is overheating, that might be something you need to do. Now we gotta figure out how to remove the power supply. Oh, there we go. And it just comes out like that. So we have some thermal paste, some viscous thermal paste 
over the expansion memory slot, then we should be able to remove the motherboard. So just lift up and then we can pull it right out. We also have some more viscous thermal paste here and here. And here is the top side of the motherboard. And here is the bottom side. We'll take a look at this SSD in a minute. Let's remove this X clamp and then remove the heatsink. I definitely like the X clamp on the Xbox Series X a lot more than this one. This one is pretty much the same as on the Xbox One original, the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X. Now with that removed, we can remove the heatsink. And here we have more viscous thermal paste and more viscous thermal paste over here. We have a big copper plate and then more copper over here and we've got the heat pipes right here. Now we need to remove this plate and then we can take a look underneath the plate and look at the APU. And here's a look at the bottom side of that plate. We've got more copper plates right around where the viscous thermal paste is. And that thermal paste is right over these RAM chips. While the cooling system on the Xbox Series S isn't anywhere near as robust as on the Xbox Series X, since the Series S doesn't have as much computing power and probably isn't putting out anywhere near as much heat, this cooling system is likely adequate for the smaller and less powerful Series S. And once again, you can clearly see that Microsoft did not include the perfect amount of thermal paste. I'll have to fix that once I put it back together. The power supply on the Xbox One S All Digital is much smaller than on the Xbox Series S. Let's take a look at the bottom side. The output on the Xbox One S All Digital is 12 volts and 10 amps. And the output on the Xbox Series S is 12 volts and 13.75 amps. The ports on game consoles are pretty common failure items. These ports look just as strong as any of the other ports on any of the other consoles. So just be careful when you're plugging things in and out of the ports and you'll be just fine. Now it's time to take a look at this SSD. This SSD is made by Solid State Storage Technology Corporation. This is the front side and this is the back side. So overall, I would guess that the Xbox Series S is gonna be more repairable than the Xbox Series X. If you wanna see why, check out my teardown on the Xbox Series X. I'll put a link up in your screen right now if you haven't watched that yet. Don't forget to go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix to get the best deals on all of the iFixit products on your list. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.